Hello, hello everyone. My name is Laura. This is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video that I'm finally doing. It is my historical fiction, like favorites, recommendations, books that I've read video. So I had this idea a while back that I was going to do like a historical fiction recommendations video or like just a historical fiction video because I was getting back into reading historical fiction, I wanted to talk about it, I just really wanted to get back into it. But when I look back on my channel I realized all that I really created was a, a TBR for historical fiction, like a bunch of historical fiction books that I had gotten that I would wanted to read or to finish and I haven't made a historical fiction video since. So I was like, I need to rectify that. I need to just start from scratch. Here are some of the historical fictions that I have read, have loved, am reading, etc. and so forth. So I've got a decent stack next to me to talk about that are all historical fiction. Let's start with some of the recent historical fiction that I've read and loved. So let's start off with The Fountains of Silence by Rudis Apetes. I am talking about this a little bit recently. So this book takes place during the Spanish Civil War and it takes place in Spain and you are following two POVs. One is of a young woman living in Spain who is just trying to keep her family afloat, keep them under the radar, especially since their parents were taken because of their views and the other POV is of a man from the states whose mother is Spanish so they decide to go to Spain for like a vacation of sorts but he is an aspiring photographer and wants to capture real Spain and uh, these two have a an unlikely meeting and there is a very slow burn romance that happens with them and you know there is a big time jump in this book um, but you know, it was really sweet. It really, it was, I don't want to say that it was just low key, but it also kept me on the edge of my seat the whole time. Like I was just like waiting to see what was going to happen next. And so it was just a very good one to read. Like Rita Sepetis does a great job of writing from different POVs in different parts of history. So this is actually my first book by Rita Sepetis, who is very known as a great historical fiction writer in this day and age so I I've been wanting to pick up a bunch of her books but I haven't until now and so I cannot wait to pick up more um there's a book set in Romania that I am excited to read and the salt of the sea has been on my radar for quite a while as one to pick up by her so she is definitely one that I will be getting into a lot more in the future Similarly, I read The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. I say similarly because Kristen Hanna is another really good historical fiction author that has a couple other books out, not quite as many as Rudis and Petty's, um, but I keep going back and forth if I want to read like The Great Expectations or Four Winds just because this book made me bawl. It's so emotional and it's just heart-wrenching. Again, you have two BOVs in this one. Uh, you are following these two sisters in France during World War II and uh, one sister is very rebellious, very rambunctious and she becomes the Nightingale. She does what she can to fight against the Nazis that are occupying France at the time and then her other sister is much more the stay-at-home mom, kind of has settled down. Her husband gets enlisted to fight against Germany and then German soldiers actually end up occupying her home with her her and her daughter and so you read about her experience and that was the timeline or not timeline but the POV that really hit me good was that one that was definitely my favorite of the two but you definitely get a good and very interesting mix uh, in this book so uh, I don't know if I want to read the other ones I think I need to read them very spaced out because I just can't take the emotional trauma behind them. But they're so good. The writing is so good. Oh. So we'll see. This is definitely a staple in historical fiction in my opinion. Some other books that I've read. I have another World War II historical fiction that I've read and that is The Prisoner's Wife and this is by Maggie Brooks. Um, it's inspired by a true story of a, she's like a Czech farm girl. He is a soldier that's put into a camp. They end up 
meeting, running off, getting married, and then they get caught and put into um, those camps as well. But she, they pretend that the Czech farm girl is actually a man so that they don't get separated. And so you read about their experience in the concentration camps and how they do or don't pull off hiding her as a woman and pretending that she is a man. Um, so again, it's a very like romantic, heartfelt World War II kind of novel. Um, you know, it's if that is what you enjoy, then you're gonna love this. And I, I hadn't read a lot of World War II historical fiction at this point because I hadn't read a lot of historical fiction. Um, but this is definitely one that stuck with me, so yeah, I knew I had to have it on my shelf. Now the next few ones, and pretty much most of the rest of these books are on my list are not World War II because as I am getting into historical fiction a lot more, I don't want everything I read to be historic, uh, to be World War II books. There are a lot of them out there and a lot of them do interest me, so I will be reading them, but I do also want to try and break out of that and read non-World War II historical fiction. So I read The Witches of St. Petersburg by Imogen Edward Jones and this takes place in like Victorian Russia where these two sister witches cast a spell and they basically create Rasputin and you see what he does, where he grows, kind of the where he came from in terms of this these women's magic to how he gets to fancying the queen and just everything and it just everything when you look at the ending it's like wow that's so blown out of proportion how in the world did we get there and then you like read through the book and you're like how is this happening how did we get here style book and it was just very fun very interesting very different take it's a good witchy historical fiction that isn't necessarily witches of salem but it's still that vibe and then I have a an Italian Shakespearean historical fiction. This book actually has two timelines, kind of, um, and that is Juliet, and this is by Anne Fortier, and you're following one character in modern day in Italy, and she's kind of going through and learning about the truth of what actually happened in Romeo and Juliet, as in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. And so the other timeline we're following is Juliet and uh, she so our modern day main character is said to be the great 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 etc and so forth granddaughter of Juliet Ptolemy. Yeah it was a very interesting take on Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet you know they make some changes of like oh this is actually how it was even though it, Shakespeare says this but that's not actually how it was these people were real this is their actual story and so you're you're uncovering it both in the past and in the present so it's half and half, uh, but it, there were some really fascinating parallels and kind of like almost like a reliving in modern day elements as well as there is other relatives coming in and causing a fuss. So if you're a fan of Shakespeare and you haven't read this, you should consider giving this one a read. Now I've got some gothic historical fiction. I think one thing that I really want to get into and have been getting into um, are historical fictions that are more than just historical fiction or historical romance and that's like historical gothic or gothic romance or historical thriller. Those I'm finding to be quite fun. So I've got some books here that I've enjoyed. For example, Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This is like 1850s Mexico, like Mexico City. So it's historical and it's fiction, but there's also this like eerie gothic element to it. So I just want to have give these books their place in the historical fiction genre in this video. So you're following our main character who gets a letter from her cousin who just married this like rich white American man and you know everyone was kind of like uh, about the wedding in the first place. But, uh, so she gets this disturbing letter from her cousin. She's like, okay, I need to go and make sure she's okay and see what's up. So she goes to the house where they're staying at in this big mansion and she meets, like, the brother of the guy and she's like, w and her cousin's like, no, I'm fine. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have sent the letter. Everything's totally fine. You can go back to Mexico City. I mean, unless you want to visit, but, you know, it's all okay. 
Um, but our main character is not quite convinced about that, and so she starts to uncover the dark and disturbing secrets of this gothic romance relationship. So this had a great twist at the end. I love this and I like Sylvia Moreno Garcia's writing in this one. Um, so I cannot wait to see what other historical gothics she comes up with. She did have another one, The Daughter of Dr. Moreau, um, but I think I still think this one was better in my opinion. So. The other two books in this kind of gothic romance historical fiction are a duology and that is Anatomy, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz and Immortality, A Love Story by Dana Schwartz. So this is the first book. You do need to read this book because this is the sequel that just came out. And uh, aren't these covers amazing? When I have more space on my shelves, I would really love to like display these, especially around spooky season, like the heart and the brain. Just oh. Anyway, so this is like old time Scotland. Our main character wants to go to medical school to like be a doctor, but because she is a woman, she can't do so. So initially in this book, she dresses up as her brother and she, the professor tells her, if you can pass my exam, you can take my class. Um, and so she enlists the help of a grave digger to help her dig up dead bodies to examine them and learn from them to pass the exam. And she's just a strong, willed, feminist, sciencey. It was so good. And there are elements of kind of like sci-fi fantasy in here. It's not super strong in the first one, but it does come back into play in the second one, which I'm mentioning because that was really my only disappointment in the first one is that it introduced this concept and then kind of strayed away from it to focus more on the romance and the like just biological study side of things. But it does come back in this one and I loved reading about it. I thought it was fascinating. So these are some historical fictions that I have loved. Plus it's in Scotland. I adore Scotland. So. so those are all the books that I have finished reading. I am currently reading a historical fiction book, one that I saw at Goodwill and was like, yeah, just based off the title and the cover alone, that's good enough for me. Uh, that is The Dutch Wife by Ellen Keith. Uh, so this is actually not what I expected. So I am not quite halfway through, but it is World War II. And you are actually following three different POVs. You are following The Dutch Wife. And she has actually been placed in a concentration camp, but in a brothel of it. So just look up trigger warnings. This book does get quite explicit around those topics. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, so it follows her in this brothel and she just wants to find her husband and get back to her old life of baking cakes, working in a bakery. And I was like, Dutch bakery? Hi, hi, I'm a Dutch person who works in a German bakery. <laughs> so that really is what captured my attention. But we are also following the point of view of this higher ranking Nazi soldier who comes and visits the Dutch wife. Um, and I'm really intrigued to see where this relationship is going because it's clear that he's getting attached to her and she has a complicated feeling towards him because she does not like him as a Nazi. She doesn't agree with the Nazi party. She does not like condone any of it. She is disgusted by what this man has done. But you know, there is a certain intimacy that is happening between them by force. Um, and so she can't help but feel a certain amount of like comfort with him as they're forming a bit of a relationship unlike what she has with her other visitors um so i am cautiously interested in this because yeah i just really want her to get her husband back and you know live happily ever after um and then we also have another point of view in argentina about um a a man who is taken by the government as un desaparecido. So if you're unfamiliar with what has happened in Argentina, um, basically people, children, babies have just been disappearing and nobody's happy about that. Like everyone is freaking out. You know, your child gets taken like, and becomes a desaparecido and they, you, all you can do is put up flyers of them being missing. But like when the government allegedly, is taking these children like oh it's just so terrible um but 
this main character might also be gay. So there's an interesting connection there, especially with Argentina and Germany and the Nazis also, um, you know, rounding up homosexual people and putting them through conversion camps and things like that. So again, lots of trigger warnings, just be aware of that. Um, but it is heart-wrenching at every turn. So yeah, like I said, I'm not quite halfway through, but also the blurb of this is readers of The Nightingale will be rewarded by this original and unforgettable tale. I literally talked about The Nightingale earlier in this video, and I, I agree, I can see where there are crossover elements with like um, how the wife here loses her husband to somewhere in the war and like doesn't know what happened to him, if he's even alive or not, but then her house gets occupied by a German soldier to get separated from her husband is taken and put in a brothel for German soldiers and actually people in the concentration camps. She is their reward for good behavior, which is interesting and not something I really heard about the Nazis doing, but it's, of course, it's kind of a taboo topic, so I understand why I haven't heard of it, but I'm intrigued. Anyway, so this is, this is my current read, and oh. so that is where I'm at with historical fiction. Obviously, I have other historical fiction on my shelves as I have a historical fiction section that leads into my classics on the shelf. So if you would like to hear more about what these books are, uh, if you want to know more about, yeah, the historical fiction up here that I've read, because I've read all the other historical fiction on my shelves, uh, I would be very happy to make another video. I think I, this is a video that I would like to continue with as a series of, as I read more historical fiction, I can do a recommendations, I can do a roundup that is specifically historical fiction. So if you're interested in that, let me know, comment that down below. Also give this video a like if you're interested in that. I'm interested, so I'm probably just gonna do it. But it's nice to know that uh, there are people out there who relate or wanna chat with me about it in the comments. So feel free, otherwise uh, also hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified. I post videos every week during the, month of, during the months of summer. Um, Otherwise, I also have bookish social media down below that you can follow me more specifically on my reading adventures. But yeah, that is everything. So until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.